Hello everyone and welcome to Survival Japanese. Today we will talk about something very important and very interesting in my opinion. Today we will talk about kanji. This is what it says over here. Kanji. The kanjis are the Chinese characters that you um, that you will see every time you read something written in Japanese. So um, without further ado, let's begin. So as I've said already, uh, today's lesson is about a quick introduction to kanji. Um, kanji actually means, the literal translation would be, would mean Han characters. Uh, the Han represent an ethnic group in uh, China, which uh, makes up 92% of the population of China, if I remember correctly. So, um, okay, now, the Chinese characters, well, obviously originate from China. So the kanji originate from China. They were introduced in Japan by Korean Buddhist monks. Um, although the characters, the origin of the characters is from China, uh, the characters themselves changed quite a lot as the Japanese people started to experiment with them around the 4th to the 7th century of our era, around that time. There's no precise date according to my research. So keep this in mind because um, the Chinese origin are still very much more present into the, uh, in the Japanese language. Now, uh, let's move on to a frequently asked question. Does each kanji mean a word? The answer is no. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, you can't, it's not so simple as having one kanji, which means one word. Uh, if it was that simple, Japanese would be a walk in the park, but it's not. Let's check out some different pronunciations of one kanji in Japanese. So this is the kanji. This is one kanji over here. So one pronunciation is sora, sora, which means the sky. This is in kun reading. Uh, right now, maybe that doesn't make any sense to you, but don't worry about it. Um, I will explain all of this in the next slides. Another pronunciation is ku, which also means the sky. This one is on reading. Once again, don't worry, I'll explain that later. There's also munashi, which means in vain, fruitless, futile, which is a kun reading. So you see, although it's the same characters, the same character, the pronunciation is very different. Here it's munashi, here it's ku, and here it's sora. So you see there's different pronunciations for one kanji. There's also karappo, which means to be empty, kun reading. So same kanji, another meaning. And finally there's also ku, which means to be empty, which is also an on reading. Now I will explain all of this in the next slide, so don't worry. Okay, now move on to the interesting part, in my opinion, kun reading. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, what does it mean, kun reading and on reading? It sounds so complicated. It's not so complicated. Kun reading refers to the Japanese native reading of the kanji. Now, remember how the characters came from China in the first place? Well, when the characters arrived in, in Japan, well, Japanese people, they had a spoken language, although they didn't have a written language, written system. So for some characters, they decided to ditch the Chinese pronunciation of those characters and go with their own their own native pronunciation of those characters, like pure Japanese of it, which is why it's called native reading. All right. Now there can be many different kun readings for the same kanji. In other words, there are many ways, as you've seen before, to pronounce one kanji. Different pronunciation means different meanings, obviously. So the way you're going to pronounce this character depends on the context. And also when you're reading Japanese, um, depending on the context, you will have to guess what is the meaning of the kanji. But yeah. let's continue in our kun readings. So as you can remember, um, this character over here, we've talked about it before, um, so here it's Sora, which means the sky. So the Kun pronunciation, one of the Kun pronunciations for this character is Sora. As in this sentence, the sky is blue, Sora wa aoi, 
which means the sky is blue. So if you want to see the sky is blue, then, or you're talking about the sky in general, in that case you will see Sora. Another um, pronunciation, kun pronunciation of this character, same character, is munashi. Munashi. So it means in vain, uh, this fruitless, uh, futile. As in, uh, ware ware no doryoku wa munashikata desu. It means our efforts were futile. So if you want to, so you see, in this case, you also have the same character, but once again, a different pronunciation. And another kun pronunciation is karappo, karappo, which means empty, as in uh, sono, sono heya wa nagai aida karoppo da. So this means the room has been empty for a long time. Now let's talk about the on reading or on yomi. On yomi means on reading because yomi means reading. Um, this might sound a little bit complicated, but it's not so hard. It's pretty simple. The on reading is the Chinese pronunciation adapted to the Japanese language. Now, when the characters arrived in Japan, they already had their own Chinese pronunciation because they're Chinese characters, right? This is, pre this is very easy to understand. But the Chinese language, for those of you who know Chinese, is very different than the Japanese language. There are sounds in Chinese which you won't find in Japanese. So the Japanese people had to adapt the Chinese sounds to their own language and this is how the on reading is all about. I'll give you an example. Let's look at this character. This kanji over here means a mountain. It's a mountain. The kun reading, the native reading, the native Japanese reading is yama. The on reading is san. san. So yama and san. So you see the native reading is very different than the on reading, which is the, Jap the Chinese reading adapted to, J to Japanese needs. Now, the Chinese pronunciation of this character uh, is actually shan, the first tone for those who know Chinese. Uh, I've lived in China for three years, so a little, I know a little bit of Chinese. So as you can see, the on reading is very similar to the original Chinese pronunciation of the same character. So san and shan, so you see it's very similar, whereas uh, yama is very different because it's the native pronunciation of the word. So I think this should help you understand what the on reading is all about. So by now you're probably asking to yourself, when am I supposed to use the on reading and when am I supposed to use the kun reading? Well, there are no clear-cut rules, however, when a word is composed of more than one kanji, the on pronunciation is usually used. For instance, in this word, which is composed of one and two kanjis, kuki means the air, the atmosphere, then you would use the on pronunciation for both of them because it's composed, the word is composed by two kanjis, whereas kun reading is a bit different. Now, when do you use the kun reading? Well. A word written with a single kanji usually, but not always, uses the kun reading. Remember this character? It was used by itself before. Well, when it's used by itself, then you use the kun reading, which is sora, which means the sky. Now, that's all for today. I have to wrap this up because I've almost reached my 10 minutes limit. Now, today's lesson might seem a bit complex, but please only keep the following things in mind. A kanji can have many kun and on readings, so it don't think it's as simple as having one kanji which has one reading and one meaning. It's much more complex than that. Some words are composed with a single kanji, like sora for the sky, whereas other words are composed with more than one kanji, like kuki for the air, the atmosphere. And different readings are used in different contexts. So different readings of a kanji are used in different contexts. So this is all you should try to remember for this lesson. Have a good one. Bye-bye.